times in that. She never lost that strategy to smile and laugh. She also inspired others to have warmth and kindness. The warmth and kindness. The warmth and kindness. The warmth and kindness. You always think you're prepared for everything, and you think you have the knowledge of what's coming ahead. Isn't it? Where am I? Uh, things will become clear quite shortly. Not exactly your car, but the car you were in prior to the accident. Oh, you mean... Yes. So now things have become crystal clear. You understand exactly what has happened? Yes, but... No, don't worry, your children will be well taken care of. But I had so much to do! Why does everyone always have to say that? Uh, I'm sorry, but who are you? Oh, please forgive me. Vicar Bones, D-D-L-L-D-P-H-D, at your service. Welcome to the gates of heaven. <laughs> the gates of heaven. You're, you're joking. Oh, no. We don't joke around here. I don't suppose that they cure my guardian angel? Well, I think it would be better for the both of us if you thought of me more as your spiritual guide. You're really serious? Yes, quite. Uh, well, what's to happen now? Am I to be escorted through the gates of heaven? Well, that's up to you. You could go there, or we could explore your other options. Other options? Yes. We can send you back. How do you mean, send me back? Well, all you have to do is sign this contract, and you'll be right back to the beginning. Right back to where you started. You're quite serious. Another chance to do everything over again? That's correct. I said it's a bit like reincarnation. Somewhat. Do you really feel like having another go at it? Frankly, I have my doubts. Oh, no, I, I should like to have another chance for Charles. Deep down, I've always loved him, but people never seem to have understood that. I should do anything for another chance. Marvelous. You'll experience the same blissful life for all eternity over and over again. <laughs> well, but, but how do you send me back? Do you have a... a Time machine? Well, not a real time machine, I like H.G. Wells, but more a time machine of the mind. Well, I don't care, you did, just send me back. Oh, how rude of me. Angels? Yes, Dick, yes. Meet Diana. <laughs> yes, very well. Uh, where are you, my son? Oh, right on the dotted line.
let's go back to the distant past From the first scene to the last Way back when, yes, now the die is cast Take it away, Hickory! Princess of Wales. No, no, I can do this. All right, if you insist. My father told me that I should get on with it, that I've been dilly-dallying far too long. Unfortunately, father is quite correct. So now I seek a perfectly sensible, level-headed young woman, and I have found good advice this is that this lady, Diana Spencer, could just be the one. Why are you so young? I didn't remember him that way. Things have already begun. Go ahead. Now tell me the truth. Did you really have a good time? Please, you were simply magnificent handling those wickets. Those were mallets, Diana. You do remember that you were at a polo match? Was it polo? Oh, God, how terribly embarrassing. 
Are you sure this is what you want? Oh, no, no, it's okay. I just find this intriguing. You see, this isn't the Charles I remember. You know something? There was actually something of a friendship there. Is that really how it was? I want you to know that I think you are utterly charming. It's so embarrassing me. You're Diana, really. No, it's okay. <laughs> You see, the important thing is, when two people are honest with each other, things have a way of working themselves out. All right, proceed. You see, we were honest with each other. I remember it as clearly as if it was yesterday. I admit, I'm just a bloody fool. Quite a dance, who always fell in school. No, you're not. You chose a different path. If it's any consolation, I failed my basic math. Please don't cringe, I wonder how you feel. I believe for books by Daniel Steele, trashy novels are the way to go. Please accept this tale of woe. Kindness, patience, and praise I'll give to you. I always hope you see things through. Now that I know you'll be by my side, I'm sure this role will grow on you. Judging you is not my cup of tea. I accept these trivialities. Do I understand you're not upset? Please, Diana, this is not the time for you to fret. Please sit down and listen carefully. I'm the prince, they all depend on me. Now your simple life is left behind. Please tell me that you will not mind. Of course not. I'm afraid I'm not much of a dancer. <laughs> Come now, you can do it. Please, Diana, I'm pathetic when it comes to this. Uh, I shall teach you how to dance. Are you alright with all this? Yes, quite alright. I didn't know if it'd be too much pressure for you. Well, what else can I say to reassure you? Will you be my guest this weekend at Belmoral? I love that. Splendid. Shall we dance? <laughs> Delighted. My world is awaiting a new star to shine. I'll be the princess of heart and mind. I want you forever to be by my side. First is my friend, and I know this won't end, and then always my beautiful bride. Job, make no mistake, my friend. Can you see this to the very end? Charles, please, it's not a job to me. Don't forget your duty to this grand old monarchy. I will try to be the perfect wife. I'll support you in this lonely life, and together we'll be quite a team. Friends forever, that's our dream. Instructions, I wouldn't be making mistakes. Fine. Rule number one, if it looks old, 
Don't touch it. Fine. Rule number two, no cigars allowed in my rooms. I have been the Prince's secretary for some time, and I am not accustomed to being spoken to like that. And I am the Prince's wife-to-be, and if you wish me to continue lessons, you will address me in the appropriate manner. Speaking of an appropriate manner, you will continue to learn the ins and outs of royal behaviour. Please have a seat. As a lady, this time... Do not tell me how to sit. Diana! Did stop ordering me about! You know, here's what I think of your bloody books and your bloody rules and bloody, oh. bloody you. <gasps> Diana! Oh, I am going to report this to His Royal Highness. Oh, His Royal Highness, as you may realize, has not stepped foot in here in the past three weeks. Yet he delivers every message his mother relays him on cue. You are speaking of Her Majesty. Who cares about Her Majesty? Or Prince Philip either. I've never heard about me. I've never met such a bunch of uncaring people. You have no idea how these people think or feel. I know for a fact that Her Majesty has made overtures to you that they have all been spurned. If you would like a relationship with Her Majesty, the proper protocol is to contact Her Majesty's page and to arrange a meeting, which you have not done. Pardon me, have you ever met Mrs. Parker Bowles? Diana, it's not my place to discuss Mrs. Parker Bowles or anyone else for that matter. Now I must take my leave. I will continue. Etiquette practice later. Good day. Good day. You know, Diana, you might make it a bit easier on everyone around here if you were a bit more pleasant. Damn this place. And down this bloody boring castle. Oh, I don't want to be the Princess of Wales. Ah, oh, Diana, there you are. Look, don't be alarmed. These are my assistants. You remember them. They're here to assist you in your transition to a royal. I'm not being well. And now, now, you'll feel better in a moment. Please have a seat, your royal highness. Ladies and gentlemen, Her Majesty, Queen Elizabeth, oh, Queen Mother. Diana, you look simply wonderful. Isn't she beautiful? Oh, yes, quite. I understand that you and Charles had a wonderful time at Balmoral yesterday. Well, that's exactly what she said to me. How did you know that? We just now. Stay calm. I've called you here today so that you may never forget your duty to the crowd. What's going on? Listen to her, Diana. We are trying to teach you something that you must know if you are going to survive the court this go-round. Your love for Charles is secondary in comparison to your duty to the nation. In everything you say and do, you represent us. Never forget that, my child. We are all counting on you.
with him just before the wedding? Yes, of course. You said you wanted to see everything, didn't you? Uh, yes. The more I know, the better prepared I'll be to make the necessary changes. Well, very well, then. Step back. Into the shadows. I'm going to reproach you. You are? Indeed. I have been up all night waiting and wondering. Is that so? Indeed. And what perchance have you been wandering about, Camilla? Oh, now, Jolf, you know that I'm dying to know how you've been getting on. Actually, there's nothing much to tell. To be frank, I've been very busy, and we haven't spent that much time together. So, by avoiding her, we are again walking down that old let's be as cautious as we can road, as we have done so many times before. I think it's the prescription for another one of your failed relationships. Listen, this is only a temporary arrangement. After the wedding, there'll be a lot more time to cultivate the relationship. But I'm optimistic, because I do believe that at her core, Diana is quite refreshing. Ah, uh, now we're getting somewhere. Quite unlike so many of these appalling feminists who I seem to be running into these days. How I despise intellectual women. Then she is suitable? That's what I like about her. Completely unfettered. From what I've seen of her, she seems a bit mousy, perhaps a trifle untutored. Possible that you found your own Eliza Doolittle. <laughs> oh, please. There's nothing common about her. You know her family's of royal blood. My parents find her quite acceptable. Yes, but what about her parents? Don't you think that nasty divorce of theirs may have affected her? In what way? Well, she may have developed a neurotic complex of sorts. Well, she appears to have a cheerful disposition for the most part. For the most part? Hmm. And as far as that allusion to Professor Higgins, I have no intention of trying to mold the young woman to fit my taste. Not at all. As I'm in love, I very much plan to give her space. Did you say you were in love? Charles, did I hear you correctly? Well, what is love anyway? Very few people are truly in love. A couple should approach marriage in a rational way. I wouldn't exactly say my parents are in love, but maybe they are in their own way. The truth of the matter is, they've effected a bloody good arrangement, and it's worked pretty well all these years. Well, I, I quite agree with you that one must approach these things in a rational manner. Others, however, are not completely rational when it comes to this subject. How do you mean? There are some persons who've advised me against marrying Diana. Who are they? They shall remain anonymous. Now, do tell, Charles. Camilla, how do I look? Smashing, as usual. Now stop it. Do tell, Charles. No, it's really of no importance. The gist of their advice is that I'm rushing into things. And can you imagine this? That we have nothing in common. That's absurd. Precisely my sentiments, too. You're very good at seeing my point of view, Camilla. I've always said that. Camilla, I'm terribly sorry that you were not invited to the wedding. It's hard to know what goes through Diana's head. She's trifle insecure. Perhaps that's it. What is, Charles? 
As I said, while she seems to have a cheerful disposition at the core, she's on the other hand often quite moody and prone to emotional outbursts. Sometimes she cries for no reason at all. Under tremendous pressure. Camilla, we need to get this out in the open right now. I'm sorry to say this, but as I told you before, I'm afraid that after the wedding, we shan't be able to see one another. Oh, I, I quite understand, but I, I do hope you will bring me up once in a while. I just don't know. You see, Camilla, it was our timing. I'm afraid our timing was simply off. Charles, don't say that. I'm afraid it's true. Not only were we fated not to be, but nothing was ever fated to go right in the first place. In reality, what are we really good for? We have no true function. We're nothing but living, breathing anachronisms. <laughs> Nonsense now. You are simply frustrated that things didn't plug out between us. That's not it at all. I'm afraid in the grand scheme of things, we're becoming old fuddy-duddies. Old fuddy-duddies? Yes, squares. By the time we're 40, we'll be known as the has-beens. No, 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 you've got it all wrong. We will be like fine vintage wine. Hardly. We'll be like the old silent movie stars. Once in the glory of their youth, but now so sadly long forgotten. Well, I rather like the old picture shows, particularly the classics. Well, I rather like them myself. Then why not take inspiration from them? How do you mean? Here, have a look. Silent film splendor in the scenes are so tender of God. Dramatic exclusives, Christina was one of her best. Lessons were first rate, rise above heartache with courage when put to the test. Fairbanks charisma, the prisoner of Zenda, the magic of his majesty. Hardships, emotion, with artful devotion, will bring back that old when he doubts fears that you've got on in years, confidence hits a new low. No need to hide, we can bolster our pride from those celluloid scenes long ago. on a happy note. I want you to have this. Charles, it, it's beautiful. C and C. Yes. Goodbye, Charles. Goodbye. What do you intend to do next? You see, Vicar, the problem is, 
I wasn't forceful enough with Charles, and I let that Bowles woman gain the upper hand, and I won't let it happen again. Are you sure? Are you saying I'm done? Oh, please, your ladyship. I assure you, Vicar, I know what I'm doing. So I see the wedding is back on. And isn't that Charles talking with his parents before the wedding? Do you wish to listen in? Yes. Then step back. What is going on? I'm afraid Charles has some bad news. There's no bad news at all. She went back to see her father. Whatever do you mean? Perhaps it's a case of pre-wedding jitters. Charles, are you saying Diana may change her mind about the wedding? I'm not saying anything of the kind. It's obvious to me we're dealing with a highly unstable personality. Thank you, Philip. Charles, can you assure me that everything is going to be all right? There is no need to be alarmed. She needed a little time to spend with her family. Have you both gone mad? Don't you see what's at stake? Yes, Philip, we do. However, I do believe the time has come to tidy things up. Tidy things up? Very well then! I shan't interfere with your plans any longer. You've obviously both made your minds up. Philip, dear, you're fretting unnecessarily. After all, Diana does come from a respectable family. Heaven forbid she ends up like your sister. That is absurd. Diana is a school teacher. And I will thank you not to bring Margaret into this. Yes, once Diana gets a taste of the limelight, she'll be out clubbing every night. How do you know that? Are you some sort of expert? Now do calm down the both of you. Charles, you will see to it that not a word of this gets out to the press. Do you understand? Yes. And you'd better make sure that Diana does not change her mind. She's young and immature. She's never had to be responsible. <coughs> Please, don't worry, Mother. It would be a disaster if she called off the wedding. Everything will work out. She just rung, assuring me that everything is going to be all right. Oh, rubbish! Well, I do hope so, for your sake. You will call me as soon as she returns. I will, I promise. Are you coming, Philip? Have I a choice? <laughs> Since early in the morning, throngs of people from all over the United Kingdom have come to catch a glimpse of the princess who has won their hearts. John, just a few moments ago, Earl Spencer, Princess Diana's father, got into the glass coach with his daughter and they are headed our way. Yes, Mary. They should be here any minute and over 700 million worldwide will watch the princess as she walks into the cathedral. If you just tuned in, Princess Diana is wearing an ivory silk gown with a 25-foot train. Many royal watchers never thought they'd see the day when the prince finally decided to tie the knot. Oh, yes, it's certainly been a long time, but it was well worth the wait. John, do you think Charles has finally got it right? Oh, yes, I do, Mary. And Diana seems to fit the bill as the perfect candidate. But simply put, she has no baggage on her shoulders. So you're saying that the, that the women Charles had previously considered may all have had some sort of checkered past? No, Mary. Simply put, they weren't suitable for the heir to the throne of England. Well, the action man has finally found his mate. Look! Here comes the coach! <laughs> The stage is one of style and grace, everything is now in place. History is on display for royal wedding day. Six mountains celebrate, gathers here with the prince of state. The power of land of the superb love is in the air. When two hearts are joined as one, love we say the we were told. How the nations have loved you and so.
not a chance A storybook romance So be free to take on This game is just inside We're members of the worldwide press From all the audience best The royal teacher's special guest A story of the century has reached another bump in the road, navigating the treacherous waters of royal aptitude. Or should I say, ineptitude. Well, then again, every twist and turn seems to represent another bump in the road. This particular bump is, shall I say, wickedly delicious. A most revealing party in which my operatives are already in place to move things so efficaciously along. Angels! Yes, Vicar? Are you ready for our little party? Oh, no need to answer. I have full confidence in your abilities. Oh, Ta-ta. Ta-ta, Oh, Hello, lovely. Hello, Vicka. Why so blue? Well, wedding was wonderful, but the honeymoon was a disaster. And Charles kept on killing more defenseless animals on his hunting jobs. <laughs> Yes, it's all beginning to look like everything that happened before. I don't see much of a change. Not true, Vicar. There are no more tranquilizers and no more bloody psychiatrists. Please, I have enough people lining up against me. You have my last bastion of support. Oh, yes, of course. You can always rely on me. Thank you. Well, we're off to a party and hopefully a little bit of fun. Very well. Have a great time. Thank you. a mistake. How do you mean? Don't you see? They're both here at the same party. <laughs> oh, someone bollocks us up a bit. <laughs> Come now, let's mingle in there. on my side. You do know that, don't you? Must I continue to listen to this? You will listen when they write and say how you're trying to steal my husband and that you're a rather dumpy old hag. Thank you so much, your royal highness. Uh, get out, you insufferable, horrendous bitch. You are not to be at this party and stay away from my husband. That's right, leave and do not show your face here ever again. Yes, I haven't felt so.
so good in my entire life. Now that's what I like to hear. By George, it does sound like you're feeling better. Oh, much better, Vicar. And it's time to let yourself go. Live life to the fullest. What do you mean? Outside of the palace? Yes, your world is London, not some stuffy old palace. You are so right. I've been thinking that for quite some time. Then I'll start you on your way. Fabulous feelings, fabulous friends. The time of your life when you're on the mend. Let's spin around in this merry go round in London town. Pick yourself up where to begin. So many choices, that's not a sin. It's time to discern all the lessons you've learned in London town. Take control and be strong. of unstable individuals breaking into the palace as a blight. I'm quite aware of those incidents. I suppose you, like everyone else, have had a rip-roaring time following the Diana Camilla soap opera. We try not to put any stock in salacious uh, gossip. No salacious gossip for us. Oh, well, then you are to be commended, detectives. Oh, believe it or not, I do try and keep my emotions in check. You see, if I were to become overly emotional, then I'd simply be sinking to the level of that foolhardy adolescent. We admire your ladyship's dispassionate demeanor. Oh, I see the one that I can count on. May I ask a favor? Certainly. Would you mind if I vent? Oh, please. Uh, vent all you like. Oh, well then, uh, here's my take on the events as they have unfolded thus far. Dedicated to my girl Friday 
no, not now. What is it, Charles? I've had a long day. Can't you see I'm busy? Yes, that's quite clear. Diana, do you realize you've already spent 200,000 pounds on Highgrove? I agreed to let you renovate the house, but I expected some restraint. You are so mean about everything. That's ridiculous. <laughs> All the money in the world. I'm afraid the public doesn't like it when we exhibit such extravagance. Be that as it may, you gave me free reign to remodel Highgrove, and I cannot do it properly without the necessary funds. You are impossible. Wait a minute. You're not dressed appropriately. That's right. I will not be attending. You can't be serious. This is the most important event of the year. It is the remembrance for our war dead. I'm aware of its significance. You say I am daft? Please, that's not what I meant. I'm not going to that fucking ceremony. Have you gone totally out of your mind? Not at all. In fact, I'm anticipating one of your little speeches about your bloody duty. That's right. My duty and yours. I explained that to you right before the wedding, in case you've forgotten. Diana, you will get dressed, and you will be ready. And what are you going to do about it? Divorce me? Every time I turn around, you've created another excuse to ignore me. It's the same broken record, isn't it? I am not going to that ceremony, so there. I have a little news for you. The Queen, you recall her, has decreed that you shall attend, whether you like it or not. I hate you! Get out! Get out! Get out! All right, is that it? Have you had enough? I, I'm leaving. Fine. So am I. I'm exiting through the back door. You can go out the front door and talk to your reporter chums. Just keep sucking up to them as you always do. Charles! Charles! with Her Majesty on the subject of my son's marital difficulties. Yes, sir. Giles, do you suppose the public has grasped my little secret as yet? Secret, sir? Yes, that I'm not exactly a great fan of the press. That's a difficult question, sir. <laughs> These tabloid reporters, they are nothing more than the most reprehensible creatures that have ever walked the face of this planet. You do agree with me, don't you? Yes, sir. They're dying for some more sordid stories about me. But let's face it, I always disappoint them. You know what I'm talking about? My various affairs with beautiful women around the world. Have you ever heard anything more ridiculous? No, sir. Think of it. The Duke of Edinburgh humiliating his wife before the entire world with some cheap, common little tryst. I have better things to do with my time. Of course you do, sir. How can you suppose they possibly think that? My life has been under a microscope since the day I met the Queen. With your leave, sir? Yes, yes, of course. Sit down! Mother, I can sense there's something wrong. I see that you're upset. Are you? <laughs> Many months ago, there were some difficulties with Diana during the Remembrance Day ceremonies. You will recall she arrived late. I know, and I should have said something to you about it sooner. Well, I didn't bring it up at the time because I was preoccupied with other important matters, but the entire incident was extremely embarrassing. Mother, I am sorry. Well, I wouldn't have said anything. But there seems to be a rather disturbing pattern developing here. Do you agree with me, Philip? If the reports that I've been receiving are true, then I would have to agree there is indeed a disturbing pattern here. And I am quite aware of it. 
You do not give me much credit, but I have tried with Diana the best I can. Shut up! Did it ever occur to you that you, Charles, are the one to blame? I? What is going on with the two of you? I was there at Sandringham after that childish argument when Diana fell down the stairs. I saw it with my own eyes. Was that my fault? We argued because she inappropriately left early. Was I wrong to chastise her? I think not. And falling down the stairs was an accident, and she was not hurt. Well, thank heaven for that. But we cannot have the Princess of Wales losing control in front of everyone. I will not tolerate it. Mother, I'm beginning to think I made a mistake by marrying Diana. How so? When we first met, she seemed like a perfectly natural and wholesome young woman. But after the honeymoon was over, she became terribly cross and unreasonable, and has been that way ever since. Your father warned you that she was from an unstable home, didn't he? I don't. She was nervous. I... She was an inexperienced girl for a broken home. Mother, I was feeling pressure, especially from father. Oh, please. Uh, please do not blame your father for your mistakes. You acted selfishly. How can you say that? I did everything that was expected of me. Is that why you married Diana? Because of the expectations of others? No, of course not. Do you realize how long I have tried to find a suitable wife? Well, your choice of Diana to be your wife was not a good one, but now that you are married, you will redouble your efforts to get along. I have tried, Mother. I have tried. Well, you're going to have to try harder. Do you think you can get up and just call this whole thing off? No. I hate to be so hard on you, but your marriage reflects poorly on all of us. The people of England look to us and we must set an example. Charles, the first time I met your mother, I knew immediately that she was the right one. Of course, we had our differences, like any couple, but we sorted them out. Is it that hard to sort things out? Perhaps you should take an example from us. Silver and gold. Silver and gold. I beg your pardon. Silver and gold. Yes, that's right. If you just Pull yourself together before you know it. You'll reach your silver anniversary. 25 years of wedded bliss. With a little more discipline. Gold, 50 years. It's not impossible. Silver and gold, Charles. What a combination. Silver and gold, what a combination. 
to get along with you, my dear. Well, that sounds a bit out of the question now. You seem angry. Well, they're plotting against me. Oh, I wouldn't use the word plotting. I would. Well, then you'll want to listen in. But I must caution you in regards to the scene that is now unfolding. Charles's most vaunted sensitivity may be on display here. <laughs> sensitivity? You make me laugh. No, I'm quite serious. Your ladyship, you're not the only one who's had trouble with their parents. Uh, go ahead. Have a look. I received your message. Something's come up. Well, it must be important. I thought we had an agreement not to see each other. Things have changed. I'm afraid Diana is pregnant. I don't think you expected this sooner or later. Well, the original plan was later, not sooner. I don't know whether I should say I'm sorry or congratulate you. Have you told your mother? Of course. She's very happy. She and father hope this may bring an end to our marital strife. Charles, why am I here? Camilla, I have thought of you every day since the wedding. There has not been one day I haven't thought of you. Please. I don't want to burden you with my problems, but I've been very depressed lately, and your friendship is my only solace. Diana fights me at every turn. My staff is leaving in droves. Her mood swings are worse than ever. She's constantly demanding things of me, and we are further apart than ever. I find myself growing more and more contemptuous of her. Not every marriage is a happy one. I see no way back to the beginning. It's these screaming fits. It's so appallingly uncivilized, and she's sucking me into it. I'm beginning to act like her, ill-bred, arrogant, irrational, and unkind. I'd have to agree with that assessment. What? Charles, I am a married woman. You, a married man. I thought we had an agreement. I thought you'd be glad to see me. An agreement made at your insistence, I might add. Well, if you have no interest in what's been going on, then I simply won't confide in you. Please, don't get defensive. All I am saying is that I have wanted to be there for you. I haven't made it easy. After all, you never even called me your best mate. I know. I'm sorry. You're the only person I feel I can talk to. My parents never allowed me to express my emotions. Keep it in. Don't let your feelings get the better of you. Don't surrender. Charles. The entire palace regards me as completely devoid of feeling. When Lord Mountbatten, that is when Uncle Dickie was killed by those bloody IRA terrorists, that was the one and only time I ever publicly expressed my feelings. And do you know what Father said? I must never show my feelings in public ever again. Never, he said, never. Forget what I said, darling. I'll help you. It's hard to open your heart when you're taught not to let your feelings out. Well, then you must think positive. I just don't know where to turn. But I suppose I'm going to have to make you understand. Never start from the highest peak. Never share with the world all you seek. Never reach for the shining star up above. Never smile like children do. Never dance, always be blue. Never, never fall in love. Never reach for that pot of gold. Never act, never be bold. Show your courage 
it is appalling what she has done. This is the last straw. I never thought she'd go this far. And she denies having written it. Who does she think she's fooling? She admits she gave all the information to her friends. She provided the notes directly to the author. She wrote the blasted thing herself. We are losing control of this woman. No, we have already lost control. Before you know it, she'll be filing for a divorce and tattling her tawdry tale of woe throughout the kingdom. The only sensible thing is to grant her request for a separation. We have done everything for this girl, and she has betrayed us. She wants a separation. I say, give it to her. I have done everything I could, and now there seems to be no way out. Charles, before I begin, is there anything that you wish to say? The publication of this book, to me, represents the grossest betrayal. It was intended to put me down and embarrass all of us. I don't know what else to say. The fault ultimately lies with me. If I could have prevented this, obviously I would have. Charles. I have been to see the Prime Minister, the Archbishop, and my mother. And they have all advised me that a divorce is out of the question as it would weaken the monarchy. It is with deepest regret that I have come to realize that keeping the two of you together would be just as bad. Diana is so bold. Change of plan. It's time we said farewell. For she has forced our hand. Her discretion's lacking. We'll send her off and pack in. Haven't she has wrought? Brazenly forgot her duty to the crown. A rebel with the cause. She made us look like fools. Took a secret oath, disparaged every rule. I abhor her action, too late for an interaction. Her mind is quite unsound, there's mayhem all around, lost her duty to the ground. Though she was powerless, she resisted. The fairy tales gone stale, our story's not for sale. We'll stop her now in this we'll never fail. Oh, in this we'll never as Her Royal Highness. You have to be so cold about it. I'm not being cold. You will still be known as the Princess of Wales. What are you so upset about? You know, I'm finally beginning to realize something. You, you can't help yourself. You're as cold as ice on the inside. Face the facts. It's over. It's been over for years. Strangers we become, the best has passed us by. If I said there's hope, it would be a lie. We're truly at an impasse, we've rambled on too long. Now the gig is up, can't go on, I'm cold and blue. From this love that never grew. Pardon, 
if you acted reasonably fair. sadly depart, there are a few things that must be said. Now here's a story of a princess be bad. Couldn't admit it, she was feeling quite sad. Pull off the covers and who's in your bed? You're in too deep, you're over your head. Your guy is something, he plays real fast He's out of your league, but you never asked A snort of cocaine and a drink at the bar Watch out now who's driving his car Shy, die, don't cry She toiled in her garden without any love My heart, poor die Didn't listen to the angel A glamorous mask, spite in your heart, 
that was your prize in front of your face, the devil. Explained in the fine print of the contract. But this isn't fair. I did everything to the best of my ability, but you never approved of my relationships. Nobody did. Why should anyone have? All of your relationships ended in failure. Of course, the one you wanted to succeed the most was your greatest failure. So you blame me? Well, he was out all the while with that bitch shagging her behind my back. I was supposed to sit around and put up with it? Even after it was long over, your jealousy and anger knew no bounds. You did everything in your power to get back to the royal family in every way you knew how. Why shouldn't I have, after what they did to me? You knew what your duties were before you took your vows. No one told me the kind of pressure I would be under, and no one lent me a helping hand. I had to cope with everything on my own. What did you expect? Did you think the world would allow you peace and quiet while you were the Princess of Wales? You kept the spite going long after the marriage was over. You wanted total control. I wanted total control. Oh, go on. They tried to take my children away from me. You know, you, you are supposed to be my guardian angel and for you to speak to me this way, it's appalling. I'm afraid you still don't comprehend. Don't you know where you are? You are in a never-ending loop. You make the same mistakes and it happens over and over and over again. You can never escape your infernal fate. And that, your highness, is what happens to people who do not honor the contractual agreements. Welcome to your final resting place. No! <laughs> well, well, princess. All the good deeds in the world can't help you now. On the thirteenth chime, her soul will be mine. It was a magnificent plan, and my subject was superbly cooperative. She undermined herself at every turn. All I had to do was just sit back and watch.
What's that? Twelve chimes? But her soul should be mine on the thirteenth. Okay, let's get down to business. What do you think you're doing here? The angel Gabriella, if you please. So you've been working undercover all this time? <laughs> the grossest betrayal. Did you forget all about the exemption clause? Article 71, subsection 43A, all souls condemned to do our onward transport may receive an exemption provided that all parties forgive the transgressor unequivocally and without reservation. You tricked me. We did nothing of the sort. Come on, Bones, you know the rules. How the blazes did I ever forget to read that exemption clause? Quit complaining, you've had your compliment of success stories. Yes, but this was royalty. Wait one second. You don't really expect me to believe that they have forgiven her. I mean, I can understand that some of the others she might have rubbed the wrong way might have forgiven her, but the royals never. Our reports hold that they are quite remorseful and racked with guilt. Guilt? Absurd. Why don't you see for yourself, Giles? They're waiting for you downstairs, sir. The procession is about to begin. Very well. Tell them I'll be ready in a few minutes. Pardon me, sir. What is it, Giles? Well, I hope you won't mind my saying so, but uh, you must feel rather relieved. I beg your pardon? The Princess of Wales. Well, what about her? You must feel a great sense of relief. You and her majesty. Relief? I don't understand what you're talking about. Well. Didn't you always used to say, wouldn't it be wonderful if the Princess of Wales would just go away? Because now it appears she has gone away. I never said that. Just who the bloody hell do you think you are? Oh, sir, I was only You trying. will tender your resignation immediately. That's 25 years I of service. I don't care if it's 50 years. So then Her Majesty has forgiven the Princess unequivocally and without reservation. Do you think we're cold-hearted monsters here? Yes, yes, Her Majesty has forgiven her unequivocally and without reservation, as you put it. And so have I. We all have. She wasn't perfect, and neither are we. I don't want to see your face here ever again. As you wish. It's enough. It's difficult to admit it, but you were right. Would you like to hear from the Queen herself? Spare me. So, they've forgiven her, and they even admit some culpability themselves. How touching. And all others have spoken of their forgiveness, too. Enough of this prattle. Who needs the Princess of Wales anyway? There's so many other souls for the taking. Then be gone. Your job here is done. Oh, I will be back. And the next time, much more successful. Good day to you to the rest of your soft spine constituency. Ta-ta, Vicar. Is this a good time? Are you all right? All right? All right? Mother, it was dreadful. She was lying in the casket, and I looked at her and it didn't look anything like her at all. Just get a hold of yourself. Don't worry about that. I'm an expert at pulling myself together. If you need more time to grieve, I'll come back later. You know, grief is not something you can turn on and off like a spigot. Please, Charles. But then again, when you've been raised to do your duty day in and day out, sometimes a spigot is all you have. No one is telling you not to express your emotions. Well, I did do that. When I was in the morgue, I turned this spigot on ever so slightly, and the tears started dripping out one by one until the dam broke. Are you impressed? This is not the time to be sarcastic. Don't worry. I was alone. No one saw me. But you know, it felt good. Charles, I am trying to be sympathetic because I understand how difficult a time this is for you. But you may have sensed that there is now on the air an undercurrent of hostility directed at the monarchy itself. 
And it is certainly not helping things at all when you have elected to join the chorus. No, you're right. I'm sorry, Mother. I certainly didn't mean to criticize you or Father. We must now make plans for the funeral. I need you to help me. Yes, yes, of course. We've had discussions with the Spencer family, and we have come to an agreement that the funeral will be a small private affair. Mother, it cannot be. Please, Charles. Have you seen what's been going on outside? I am quite aware. No, I don't think you're aware at all. Well, you have got to get a hold of yourself. I have never been more rational. Do you understand? Mother, there will be a state funeral, and it will be held at Westminster Abbey. Diana was not a head of state. It can't be done. Well, if you don't do it, consider the consequences. You will be vilified, and you'll never hear the end of it. Never. I am trying to do what is right. Our traditions are not always a perfect fit for every situation. It's way beyond that now. This is so confusing. And the flag will be flown at half-staff over the palace. No, Charles, we cannot do that. We can do that, and we will. Duty, Charles, do not forget your duty to the crown. If I hear the word duty one more time, I think I'm going to go completely insane. This is the time to bend. You must bend, mother, or a royal rigid spine will atrophy for good. There will never be a chance of flexibility ever again. I have given my heart to the people of England, and suddenly there's a lack of appreciation. The message is clear. Loosen up. <laughs> After all the trouble that she gave us, they have made her into a saint. It just isn't fair. I will not have it. She was the mother of your grandchildren. Mother, I have always known you to follow your heart. I will take what you say under advisement, Charles. Yes, of course. Thank you for your input. Mother? Yes, Charles? I should have tried harder. We all should have. That's our cross to bear. But that was her fate. She didn't deserve to die. No one deserves to leave their children ahead of their time. But she was troubled. How troubled we shall never know. But underneath it all, she was a good soul who cared about her children. And despite her inner confusion, she warmed the hearts of so many. I know, I know. To come as soon as I heard the news, it's dreadful. What's to be done? Quite right, Charles. It's my fault. No, you know, you mustn't blame yourself. If I just was more patient you with You were me. patient, incredibly patient. That's not what most people think. Damn those people, what do they know? I was there with you, and I saw that you did everything that you could. You were all guilty of playing the pettiness game, and something like this just puts everything into perspective. It's definitely affected everyone. Even Father was upset. Camilla, would you mind if I spent a few more moments alone? Of course. I'm sorry for intruding. No, you've been enormously helpful. I just need a few more minutes. Of course. Of course. I will see you shortly. Is that you? How can it be? I'm here. I can't see you. Please, there isn't much time. Diana, I'm terribly, terribly sorry. You mustn't say that. I'm so sorry. I've made a terrible mess of things. Diana. I did love you, Charles. And I you. It seems like so long ago. Please, take care of William and Harry. You will be with them again one day. No, Charles. I have failed to redeem myself, and I will never be allowed. What do you mean? Please try to be happy. Diana. Goodbye, forever friend. I pray. 
Show the world all you see. 